Hello everybody, welcome to Art with Jim. This week we will be making Gwendolyn Maggie's colorful quilt collages. Gwendolyn Maggie is an African-American artist. She didn't learn to quilt until she was 46. Yes, 46. So for anybody out there thinking it's too late to start anything, well, it's not. She wanted to make quilts for her daughters to take to college, but instead learned that she was an artist and could say things through her quilts. At first it was about shapes and colors inspired by African art, but then she realized she could talk about things that are difficult to talk about, like slavery and Hurricane Katrina. Maggie felt that a quilt was something that everyone could understand, no matter who you were. She once said, my hope is that anyone, no matter what their race or culture, will relate to the work, find something that speaks directly to them. Now I want to finish with this quilt that's doing something really incredible. It's magical, actually. It's very hard to hear sound without using, well, sounds. Artists have been trying to do this forever, and it has always kind of not worked for me. I have to really use my imagination to hear this painting by Kandinsky. But then again, look at this one. Can't you just hear the saxophone? Not only can I see the music, I can hear it. That's not easy, and it's even harder to do with a quilt. But there's something about her colors, shapes, and lines that are just, well, musical. Okay, let's get our supplies together. First, you'll need a sheet of thick paper. I'm using square because, well, I like that shape. Then you'll need some color masking tape for a frame. I'm using red because I think it will really pop some color construction paper, and then some colorful magazine pages. This will be a collage, so we'll be adding a bunch of things together. And then a picture of something you like from a magazine. Make sure it's kind of big, because it's going to fill up the big part of your paper. And then you'll need some scissors and glue. Finally, I'll be using some oil pastels, but you can use crayons too. This is for all the white space. You'll be able to fill it in. I think we're ready. Let's get started. The first thing I need to do is make a frame with my masking tape. So I'm going to tear pieces long enough to cover each side and do one, two, three, and four. I can fold over the tape onto the back if I need to, and that will clean it up. I'm trying to make a quilt here, but we're not using fabric. We're just using paper, and we're gonna collage it together. So first thing I need to do is get a lot of different shapes and different colors to put down on my paper. Before you know it, I will have something patched work together like a quilt. After I do a few solid colors out of the construction paper, I can use the colorful magazine pages. This almost looks like the African textiles that inspired Gwendolyn Maggie on her quilts. Once I lay down those shapes on top, you can kind of see that we're quilting here. We're putting things together like a collage. Gwendolyn Maggie used a saxophone in the middle of her artwork on the quilt I showed you, but I'm gonna choose something I like here. Because I love animals, I'm gonna be using this leopard. Remember, this is your art, so it could be about anything. But because I like animals so much, I'm choosing to do that today. Now that I have all my shapes, I'm gonna start to glue them down one by one. I'll start with the solid purple construction paper shapes. Remember, leave some white space because you're gonna be filling this up with many different colors, kind of like a quilt. Once I glue those down, I'm onto the colorful magazine pages. I'm just gonna layer them one on top of the other, and it's like a patchwork. It's really amazing how much this looks like fabric, even though it's just paper. Okay, time for the leopard. I'm gonna line it up in the center. If I like it, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna glue it down. Wow, look at that. Instead of leaving white space, I think Gwendolyn Maggie would use color. Her works are very colorful. So I'm using these slick sticks, which are very soft oil pastels to fill it in. The colors blend wonderfully together and I'm gonna layer them one on top of the other. A few more colors and I'm just about finished. Look at how well these colors work together. Believe me guys, there are no wrong colors. Finally, I'm going to go over my purple solid shapes with some white oil pastel. And look at that, it looks almost like a fabric. One last thing, I noticed the leopard could stand out a little more, so I'm gonna use my black oil pastel and draw some lines around it, just so it will pop. Maybe even draw a few lines coming out of it to give it a little extra attention. And there you have it. I think Gwendolyn and Maggie would approve. I can't wait to see what you'll make too. See you next time, everybody.